We keep it moving. I'm very excited about the next speaker. Our brother is a renowned speaker. Done things such as Islam on Capitol Hill, bringing thousands of Muslims to Capitol Hill in D.C. to pray out there. He's based out in Florida now. Very excited to introduce. Please give a huge round of applause for our brother Imam Abdul Malik. Salamu alaikum. Salamu alaikum. I'm going to try one more time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه وتعالى ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا بيهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, we bear witness that nothing should be worshipped except Allah, and we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is indeed the Messenger of Allah and the Seal of all Prophets. We bear witness that whom Allah guides, no one can misguide them. And we bear witness that whom Allah allows to go astray, no one can guide into the path of truth as we have come to know the path of Islam. I need you to do me a really big favor. Are you willing to help me? Yes. Are you willing to help me? Yes. Do you promise? Yes. Okay. I need you to be quiet right now. How many of you are in high school? Raise your hand. MashaAllah. How many of you are in junior high school? Raise your hand. MashaAllah. How many of you are born in the United States of America? Raise your hand. MashaAllah. How many of you were born in New York City, the place of my birth? MashaAllah. So I have a special request. I want you to consider your own greatness for the future. The world that we live in will always continue to evolve and change. I remember when I first became a Muslim, I have never seen so many young Muslims when I first became a Muslim. There wasn't that many in the Brooklyn community. Maybe the number of massages in New York City 25 years ago or 28 years ago, maybe, maybe, there were maybe in the whole city, maybe 30. Maybe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed been merciful to our community. In light of all that has taken place, we have been the beneficiaries of Allah's mercy and His kindness. So I have a special story I want to tell you about a wonderful woman. And I want you to think about this woman. Because each and every one of us sitting here, we were born of a woman. And every prophet, every messenger, Every scientist, every judge, every teacher, every human.
human being, with the exception of two, was born of a woman. And the Prophet وسلم, once he was asked, Ya Rasulullah, who is after you? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your mother. He said, then who? He said, your mother. I want you to think about something. What was the first revelation of the Quran? Who knows? Raise your hand. Tell me what it was. Stand up. What's the first revelation? Say it again. Go ahead, give me the whole five. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Read it for me. It's okay. I'll choose a lady. Which one of the sisters can tell me the first five verses from Surah Al-Ala? I need a sister. Stand up. Any sister? Brother, I said a sister. Stop waving your hand. <laughs> Unless you're confused, then we'll have some medical examination for you to make sure we, are th we authenticate that you're sitting in the proper area. I need a sister. Give me the five verses. Anyone? Quickly. Give it to me, sister. Yes, stand. Listen up. The Quran is being recited. I want you to listen. One line at a time for me. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What is it? Iqra bismi rabbika al-ladhi khalaq. That's one. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqra wa rabbuka akram. Al-ladhi allama bil qalam. Allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Now, I want you to remember something. If by chance, you ever decide that you want to be great, this is the foundation for you and I. And I want to tie this into a story of a wonderful woman who helped nurture and change the world as we know it. It says, اِقْرَ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ Read in the name of thy Lord. Reading is the fundamental process to the access and the acquisition of knowledge. Most people don't like to read anymore. They like to be entertained. If I took the Holy Quran and put it on one side, and I put a 360 Xbox on the other side, I guarantee you, that most of the Muslim youth will give preference to a game that is meant for sport and play and they will abandon the very book that was given for their guidance and the upliftment of all of humanity. Why is that? Because we have been programmed for sport and play. I want you to think with me now. The first revelation given to the Prophet Peace be upon him. He was told, read. And his response was, Ma'ana biqani. He said, I cannot read. Jibril said, read. He said, I can't read. He said, read. He said, I cannot read. And then Allah gave these five verses. In these five verses, how many of you are students of science or like science? Raise your hand. Wonderful. I want you to go back to these five verses. Because in these Five verses is the beginning and the sign of the science of the study of human embryology, the study of life, human development. And I want you to think about something today as a Muslim. How do you evolve as a human being? And how do you fulfill the purpose for which you were created and not become like the masses of the people who are misled by mass media and sport and play? There are many people, they spend their whole life looking for the meaning of life. 
and they never find it. There are many people that are trying to be what they can never become. I watch the Muslim youth. I love you. But many of you, you are so confused. You don't even know who you are. I listen to the language that you speak, the clothing in which you wear, the things in which you say, the things in which you aspire for, and although we may be Muslim, we are just like the rest of the people. Because unless we change the way we think, we can never affect the way we behave. Unless you change the way you think, you can never affect the goals that you can achieve and the foundation of success is deeply connected to the level of your knowledge. So if I want to be a success story, it will be require that I have good information. If I want to be a successful Muslim, not just a doctor, not just a lawyer, not just an engineer, not just a politician or a person in media, but if I want to fulfill the purpose for which I was created, which was for the worship of Allah alone, if I want to fulfill that purpose, then knowledge will become essential. And in the absence of knowledge, we will become like the masses of the people. Now, in this verse, Allah says, read in the name of our Lord who created the human being. He created the human being from that moment of unification between male and female. Mother and father coming together to give life to a new life by the grace and the permission of Allah. And that process creates a congeal clot of blood. So I want you to think about something today. What is your value as a human being? What is your value as a human being and what is your purpose? I want you to think, and I'm going to tell you now the story of a great woman who offered a unique service to one of the most significant human beings in the history of all of humanity. Her name is Khadija radiallahu anh. And as young people, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember the power of friendship. The power of friendship. And the power of socially committing yourself to a purpose that is bigger than you, that lives far beyond the life that you have been given. I want you to leave here today thinking as a young per person, what is the purpose of my presence in this world? Not just get caught up in the games. I see so many young people playing games. They play games all day, games, games, games. They got 5,000 songs on an iPod. They listen to all the music. When I travel amongst the Muslim youth, they know all the rappers, they know all the musical lyrics, but they don't know 10 surahs from the Quran. They can't name 10 Sahabas. I asked a group of Muslim kids one time, where was Mecca? One group told me it was in the gates of London, and another one told me it was in Karachi, Pakistan. What a move. I want you to think though, Khadija radiallahu anha, when the Prophet received these five verses, and I want to connect this story to being socially active as a young Muslim, brother or sister. When the Prophet got the revelation, he went home to a wonderful woman. In the history of Islam, the women have always been there to support the cause. When the Prophet went home to Khadija, he said to her, Dafiruni, Dafiruni, cover me, cover me, cover me. And the Prophet ﷺ was covered by her and she began to ask the Prophet some questions about his experience. Now I want you to follow the story. You've read the story before, but I want you to think about the story in a different way. When the Prophet ﷺ began to share with her his experience in Ghar al-Hira, she took him to a wonderful man who was a family member who had knowledge. What was his name? Anybody can tell me? What was the man name that had knowledge of the scripture that the Prophet ﷺ was taken to and was escorted by Khadija radiallahu anh? What was the man's name? Huh? What was his name? Waraka. Waraka. He was a man who had knowledge. And I want you to understand the story quickly. 
When the Prophet ﷺ began to share with Waraka ibn Nawfal his experience with the angel Jibril, I want you to think about the wisdom of a man that has insight that he himself gave the Prophet ﷺ a prediction of future events by the permission of Allah. You can know some aspects of the future if you're willing to study the past. Because life repeats itself. So Waraka ibn Nawfal, he told the Prophet, وسلم, that the Namus that has come to you, this is the same angel that has come to Moses. And then, as the conversation goes on, what Ibn Nawfal said to Rasul, he said, Your people, your people, they will turn against you. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment because so many people are turning against. Islam and so many Muslims are confused about how strong they should stand up for Islam and how much of their Islam should they let be known to the world. What of them also told him that your people, Muhammad, peace be upon him, your people will turn against you. And the Prophet responded, he said, Al Mukhriji, they will run me out, they will turn on me. He said, Yes. Why? He said, never has a man or a messenger come with a message that you have come with except that the people, they turn against them. So if you're a Muslim and you study history, you should know that if you ever intend to stand up in the name of Allah and pursue a course of justice and invite humanity to a path that is pleasing to the Most High, that is based upon the worship of nothing except the Creator Himself, you should anticipate people giving you opposition. You should anticipate being viewed as a stranger. For a stranger has unique qualities. It's a wonderful thing to be a stranger. And I would recommend you go study the qualities of a real good stranger. But Walaka Ibn also told the Prophet, the people will turn against you. And he said, will they run me out? And he said, yes, because never has one come to, to them with such a message that they did not turn against. Now to wrap it up, what's my purpose of telling you that? When the Prophet wasalam, experienced a setback, and that's where we are today in New York City. The Muslim community in New York, and globally speaking, is in a setback. They're in a moment of what I call defeat. It's a moment of defeat. It's a moment of delay. It's a moment of suspense. It's a moment of a feeling of frustration, a sense of isolation. It's a moment of uncertainty. Where do we go from here? But Khadija radiallahu an, she died early in the life of the Prophet I believe within the 10 years of his mission. For 10 years, the revelation came to Khadija's home. She died. And the Prophet's heart was filled with grief. Why do I mention that? Because the Prophet never forgot that woman, our mother, the faithful Khadija. Even when she died, the Prophet would remember her friends. And once Aisha radiallahu questioned the Prophet about his love for Khadija. And the Prophet said that Khadija was the woman that she believed in him when no one else did. That she was the woman that when everyone turned against him, she was his best friend. That she was the woman that when the resources were needed for the cause of Islam, she was the one to give all that she had. And I tell the Muslims everywhere I go, Islam will never be respected in the manner that it should until we lift up the Muslim woman and show the love and the dignity and the respect for the woman of the faith of Islam. We will never succeed as a people until that happens. I want you to think about what I'm telling you. Because one of the ways the press is successful is they show the constant mistreatment and they focus on the position of Muslim women and how they're treated in society. And they focus on how girls are treated in the Muslim society. Do you know why? It is because if you turn away a woman from the path of Islam, you turn away a whole generation. But if you bring women to Islam, 
you bring a whole generation. And the first believer in the prophets, peace be upon him, was Khadija. She was the first Muslim, the first believer in Islam that gave her life was a woman. And the success of the Muslim community will deeply depend upon how well we prepare our women for leadership and responsibility, for educating and nurturing the hearts of our young brothers and sisters. Now, in my conclusion, I don't feel that as Muslims, we have an obligation to prove to anybody that Islam is not terrorism. I don't even like talking about those two words together because Islam has nothing to do with terrorism as a whole. And I don't mind if NYPD is spying in all the messages and following Muslims around. For me, that's not a problem. I thank NYPD for letting us know. Thank you. We appreciate it. Because there was a time you wouldn't even know they were there. So now they told you they're there. But the beauty that we must understand as Muslims, and this is very important, that you have over 40,000 members of the New York City Police Department. You cannot be deceived into thinking that everyone in NYPD is against you because that is the plan of the wicked. They want you to see them as an enemy and they're not your enemies. If you call the police right now and you had an emergency in the street, they would respond to you no matter what you're wearing. Is there a sense of prejudice against the Muslims? Yes. But we're not the only people that are victims of racism or prejudice or being racially profiled. But I want to tell you as young brothers and sisters, and this is my message to you, do not allow your mind to get locked in what other people are doing. You must have a vision for yourself and enough faith in Allah to believe that you can accomplish your goals in life. Because let me tell you something right now. We can lose a generation of Muslim youth by becoming obsessed with media images. If you want to be a success story as a Muslim, then you have to worship and have faith in Allah and know that Allah will protect you and that Allah will guide your footsteps as he has guided the foot of the young men and women before you. But Islam today needs you. Islam needs you. You heard what I said? Today, Islam needs you. And one of the things that we can do to change how the world views Islam is come out of the massages, come out of the corridors of conferences that are just organized for Muslims and find something unique that is missing inside the American society and let the Muslim community work together with others and find a solution to a big problem in America and you will see the change in the minds of the people. Let me give you an example. In this 21st century, can you name for me two major inventions? Two that changed the world. Name two. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You agree the iPad changed the world, didn't you? Yes or no? Tell me another invention that changed the world. Computers. What about them? How did they change the world? Internet. Internet. And I gave this example before to different groups, and I'll give it to you again, especially to you young brothers. There were two young brothers from the world of Islam. I heard them talking outside the masjid. And I told you what they said before, and I'm going to tell you again because I want to bring it home to you. And one young brother, he said to the other young brother, one was from Egypt, one was from Pakistan. And he said to the brother, what's up, my nigga? And I said, wow, wow, wow. I thought they only made niggas in America. I never knew they made them any other place. And you being a Muslim, how could you reduce yourself to such a terminology? How could you do it? You know how? Because you don't know who you are. And you know the history of those words. Words are very powerful. And so what I want to ask you to do as young Muslims, I want to ask you to ask Allah to use you for his purpose. If I never see you again, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the giver of life and the provider of all provisions, 
ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use you in America to do something that is so powerful, so positive, and so unique that it changes the destiny of humanity. That's what Mr. Steve Jobs did. He did something with Apple that has changed the way the entire world does business. That's what Muslims need to hear. We need to find a way that we can tap in to the greatness of the human spirit that Allah has put in us. And the Quran says a verse that always sticks in my mind. Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ That we have created the human being in the best of roles. What is the best side of you as a human being? What's the best that you can become? What's the best that you can do? If you live for 80 years, what will you do with that time? I don't want to focus on all the negativity that people say about Muslims. Because if you occupy your mind with all the negativity, you'll never manifest your dreams. If you know there's one key element to people who are successful, they have a vision, they have faith, they have determination, and they have patience. And Allah says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna Allah ma'a sabirin. Very Allah is with the patient. Very Allah is with the patient. So young brothers and sisters, what I want you to do is I want you to find a way to bring Islam to America in a very powerful way, in a very unique way, but not necessarily even say Islam. Do you understand what I mean by that? For example, how many of you see Muslim halal meat markets? Raise your hand. You see the halal meat market? Right? They got Arabic or Urdu or Hindi all over, right? Have you ever met a chicken that speaks Arabic? Or, or Hindi or Urdu? How come we don't just sell chicken to the whole community? Huh? When you buy your phone from Sprint, do they care about your religion? No. When they're looking for a cure to cancer, you think they care about the religion of the person that finds the cure? No. You think if you can find a way right now, right now, if you can find a way in New York City that would guarantee student participation and their attendance in school, and you were able to do something unique that inspired a generation of young people to take their academic pursuits serious, and you was a Muslim. You think the people came out to religion? No. You think if a Muslim woman right now was able to find the cure to AIDS or to cancer, and she had on full hijab and niqab, do you think they would care what she's wearing? The reason people pick on us is because we have yet to come to the table and make a major contribution to world change. And we can do it. And this generation, more so than any generation, because at your fingertips, you have access to technology. How many of you have a Facebook page? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. I know you're in trouble because some of your parents told you to delete it and you didn't listen. Raise your hand if you have a Facebook page. According to some of the reports, there's over 750 million users of Facebook. Now, when you go on Facebook, do they ask you your religion? Yes or no? Yes or no? Does Facebook ask you about your religion? Yes or no? Do they ask you about your gender? Yes or no? Do they ask you about your profession? Yes or no? Do they ask you for your location? Yes or no? Do you provide them with special information that is personally identifiable to you? Yes or no? Why do you think they ask those kind of questions? Because they know the power of information and when they have a unique service that is meant for you, guess what? They're going to send it right to you. That's power. Facebook is worth, I was told it was offered $1.7 billion. Why would one of you create that engine? Why did one of you come up with the idea of Google? I'm not laughing, I'm very serious. Because young people, you are very powerful people. There are people that work every day in the world hoping to capture your mind and capture your resources and make you a follower of a lifetime brand. What do you do for Islam? How many of you have heard of Nike? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, Nike. How many of you heard of Beyonce? Raise your hand. How many of you heard of 50 Cent? Come on, little Wayne people. How many of you heard of Little Wayne? Come on, raise your hands. See that? You know all of them. But how many of 
them know all about you. And the reason they don't know much about the Muslims in America is not because of the people who hate us. No, it's because the Muslims have not taken the responsibility to love and respect themselves and to put forth their own agenda. You have to create a new agenda in this city that shows that you're part of the American experience. And until we're able to do that, people will always pick on us until you know your power. So as I leave you, I want you young people to do a favor for me today. Are you ready? Would you help me? I want you to start a campaign for me online. Abdul Malik for the presidency, 2012. No, you can see some of you think I'm joking. I'm dead serious. I want you to blast me all over the internet in the next 72 hours. Abdul Malik for president. Restoring democracy to America. That's my slogan. Restoring democracy to America. Now some of you are thinking, Brother Abdul Malik can't win. I'm not trying to win the way they win. But what I want you to see is the power of an idea. It can travel across the globe. Just an idea. And one of you sitting here right now, one of you here, or ten of you here, there's greatness in you. And Allah can bring it out of you. The question is, as a Muslim, are you willing to bring it out of yourself? And one of the ways that you can bring greatness out of yourself is to contribute to what you're doing. How many of you have enjoyed this conference? Raise your hand. Have you had a good time? Okay, only sisters. Brothers, listen to me. Only sisters. Sisters, give a round of applause for all the workers that have made this conference a success. Give them a round of applause. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to say Allahu Akbar for all of their hard work. Takbir. 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 Good. So my instruction to you is real simple. Number one, I want you to leave here today with a sense of commitment and urgency that you will go study more about Islam. And don't tell me you don't have books. You got the internet. Any Islamic book you want just about is online. The whole Quran is online. Bukhari and Muslim is online. The seerah of the Prophet Muhammad is online. You can learn how to make prayer according to the Prophet Sunnah on YouTube. Everything you need, you have access to it online, which means that the responsibility on your shoulder is even greater. But you have to decide today to make your own choices. For this conference to be a success, it takes money for them to do this conference. How many of you paid to come here? Raise your hand. How much did you pay? How much? 20 what? Y'all paid $20? That's all they charged you? Was $20? How many parents here? Raise your hand. I want all the parents to stand up. All the parents. All the parents. Stand up. Mothers, fathers, stand up. Sisters, I want, I want the sisters. Give all the parents a round of applause for being here. Parents, I want you to stay up. Stay up. Now, I want the parents to stay up. And I want you young people to know something. That your mother, listen to me carefully because I'm finished, that your mother could have lost her life giving you birth. Your mother walked the corridors of the hospital or her bedroom or the home, nights when you were sick, when you had a cold and you had high fever, and you had a snotty nose and a dirty diaper. And your mother held you, and comforted you, and loved you. And after today, if I never see you again, I'm telling you right now, as a Muslim child, don't you ever disrespect your mother. Never. Don't you ever disrespect her. And learn to serve your mother. Because the key to success for the Muslim child is through the gateway of service. Allah says, I have not created the human being nor the jinn except for my service. There is no greater service you can offer to the world if you don't have love and respect for your mother and for your father. So today, I want you to make a commitment as a Muslim that you will honor and respect your mother and honor and respect your father. And what I want the parents to do is keep 
on bringing your children together. If we lose the Muslim children and we lose this generation, then all of your coming to America was a waste. Did you hear what I said? If you came to America for cars and houses and money, and money becomes more important to you than the soul of your children, you were better off staying in the place from which you have come. And I don't want to ask anybody here in any small way to do something for these children that only we can do. And that's one of the things I tell the Muslims. No one will invest and defend Islam if the Muslims don't invest and spend for Islam. If the Palestinians don't stand up for Palestine, nobody will stand up for Palestine. If the Bosnians don't stand up for Bosnia, no one will stand up for Bosnia. If the people of Kashmir don't stand up for Kashmir, no one will stand up for Kashmir. If the Jews don't stand up for the Jewish community, no one will stand up for the Jewish community. If the black and white in America don't stand up for Trayvon Martin, no one will stand up for Trayvon Martin. So today, parents, there's at least 20 to 30 of you standing. I want the parents today, before you leave, I want some of you to donate to this program. I'm not joking. I've seen Muslims driving cars that cost $50,000. They got a plasma TV in the bedroom, a plasma TV in the living room, a plasma TV in the dining room. They got a plasma TV in the bathroom and plasma TV in the back of the car. What the hell is wrong with you that you want to watch so much television? What has happened to us that we spend more money on sport and play than on the dean of Islam? That's why we have not succeeded. I want you to listen to me well, because I don't come to New York City a lot, because I don't like to play with the Muslim community. I want them to know that if you want to defend this religion and make our children successful, then someone has to be like Khadija and Umar and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Ali and the rest of the companions and invest in these children. They need your support and they deserve your sacrifice. So I want the parents. I want the parents. Where's the brothers in charge over here? Who do they like to check to quickly? Come on. Why don't y'all step out here? And just for the record, come on, give him a round of applause. Huh? What is it? Muslim Alliance of New York. Now, young people, I'm going to show you something. How many young people have a TV in their house? Raise your hand. Oh, how many of young people have a laptop? Raise your hand. Oh, how many have an iPad 2 or iPad 3 or iPad 4 or 5? Whatever iPad you got, raise your hand. Raise your hand. How many of you got a blackberry or blueberry or pinkberry or noteberry? Raise your hand. Now listen, I'm going to show you something. All young people, you're wonderful. You have a lot of potential. But I'm going to look for one parent first, just one. And I'm going to do this quickly because I want to go and do other things that I need to do. But you know what? I want to find one parent real quick. Some of the parents are sitting down. Like, I'm not a parent. Yes, you are. We know who you are. Is there one parent here? that will give a thousand dollars to this program. I want to find one parent. Give me one parent. One parent. One parent. Can I see one parent? One? You? Come here. You chose your father? Come here, sister. Brother, she's nominating you. Is it you? Your dad? No, I need one parent. Listen up, everybody, give me three minutes. Just be quiet. I'm going to do this quickly. Is there one parent that will donate $1,000? Where? I need one. Okay, quickly. Is there a parent that will donate to this program $500? $500. Where's the hands at? You? $500? My sister? Tapir. Tapir! Tapir! I told you it's always a woman to get us started. Tapir! Thank you. I need another.
another brother. I need another. I need two brothers now. That's not fair. I need a brother for five hundred dollars. Help these young people with this program. One brother. I see some gentlemen in the front. I'll pick you if you don't raise your hand. I'll walk right over to you. Should I do it? Should I do it, sisters? All right, brother. This is your chance. It's five hundred dollars. If I pick you, it's a thousand. So you got a discount, fifty percent off. Let's do this quickly. Five hundred. My brother there, tuck me in. Tuck me in. Tuck me in. Raise your hand again, brother. Raise your hand again. Okay, you have them? Make sure you, brothers, whoever in charge, get the name. I need another sister. Come on, sisters. I need a mother here. If you need marriage counseling, I'll be in the building for 24 hours necessary. We give you free marriage. I need another mother that will do $500. You have one? Give me a mother that will invest. $500 in these children. $500. Okay, let me make it easy. You have another sister? Right here? How many people do 100? Raise your hand. That should be a lot of hands. How many parents will do $100? Where? One? 100? Tuck me in. Tuck me in. Okay, who else? I did 100? MashaAllah. Tuck me in. I need another hundred. Right there? One hundred? Young brother. Tuck beer. Give me another hundred dollars. Another hundred. Come on, sisters. Ladies, come on. I see the jewelry that you be wearing. And the shoes and the bags. The Chanel merchandise. Give me another brother. Sister there? Mashallah? One hundred or five? Which one is that? One or five, sister? One? My kind of one? Like this one hand? Like that? Or one? One? Tuck beer. Okay, I need another one hundred dollars. Quickly. 200? What was that? 3? 100? Tuck me in. I need another hundred dollar bill. Quickly. Another hundred. Sisters, the brothers are kind of out doing you right now. Sisters, I need another mother. 100 dollars. Inshallah. 100 dollars for a sister. How many college students are here? Where are the college students at? Stand up. Mashallah, we got sisters going to college. Stand up. Stand up, sisters from college. Let's go. How many brothers go to college here? Stand up. I want to see the college students. MashaAllah! Takbir! Takbir! Okay, amongst the college students, don't sit down. Uh-uh, don't sit down. Which one of you will be the first hundred dollar donor? I want a college student. My sister? My oh, MashaAllah! Takbir! Sister! My brother! Another brother! Another brother! MashaAllah! I need another sister now. One sister gave us one hundred. Another college student. Another hundred? MashaAllah! Takbir! Sisters in the front. Another right there? Okay. How many people do 50 right now, today? $50. Where are the parents of $50 bills? Where? Where is the envelopes at? Okay, give them the envelopes, inshallah, and pass around the donation boxes, inshallah. Okay, listen, I'm going to leave, but listen, I want to say this to you. Just be quiet for one second. Shh. Listen. I really want you young people to do me a favor. I want you to fall in love with Islam. What did I say? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Some brothers are looking at me like, brother, what does that mean? I'm trying to find a wife. You're only 11 years old. Be quiet. No, for real. I met a, you know, you meet some young brothers sometimes. MashaAllah. You meet a brother 11 years old. I have to tell you this before I go. Because something happened at this conference last year. And man, you meet a brother 11 years old? He says, Brother Abdul Malik. This is what happens when I travel. When a young brother goes like this, Brother Abdul Malik, I really have to talk to you. I say, yeah. Yes, brother. It's very, very important. You know when he goes like this? It's very, very important. I know it's about a girl. I say, okay, brother. It's really important. Yes, brother. And I sit down and talk to him. He's in love with little Aisha. He's Facebooking. Or Fatima or Khadija. Don't try to act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about, because you do. They Facebooking. You know, sometimes your kids, I'm going to tell the parents on you right now. Sometimes your kids, they be in the house, you see the Quran page up, and you sit there as a father, mother, you be like, MashaAllah, Shukratullah, Allah, 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 Allah,
طيب يو نو اي غانا تيل يو سمثينغ عيشه سبحان الله احمد ايه انتو قران سبحان الله لا اله الا اسس بركه اند يو نو وات يو نو انت ذا قران يو فول لا يو انت فيسبوك بس يو هاف ميد ذا بيج ا لوس مول اند ذن يو جو تو ذا اسلامي كونفرنس اند ذي تيكسينغ ايتش اذر السلام عليكم وير ار يو سيتينغ ام ان ذا ثيرد رو اوكي ام جست كنا Look at you and give you salams. And <laughs> so little Abdullah comes and says he wants to get married. He wants to get what? I say, Abdullah, you have a job? No. Abdullah, where do you live? With my parents. How are you going to take care of a wife, Abdullah? Brother, Allah will provide for me. <laughs> he said, you know, I said, Abdullah, how old are you? He said, I'm 11. I said, why do you want to marry her? He said, brother, I love her, brother Abdullah. I said, what's her name? He says, I don't know. She gave me three different names. I'm not sure. <laughs> Where did you meet her? I met her on Facebook. <laughs> Have you ever spoken to her? Once. <laughs> Where did you speak to her? In my dreams. <laughs> so then Abdullah wants to get married. And the reason I'm telling you this is because as young people, I want you guys to focus on building a life so that you can have a strong family in the future. Because I heard one brother say one time at this conference last year that anybody can marry at any age. And he used Africa as a reference. That you see those little girls in Africa with little kids on their back, look, they can do that. I don't know who it was, but I remember the comment, and I thought that comment, with all due respect, I thought that was very dangerous. So to all you young people, get a good education, try to be a good Muslim and be productive, and inshallah you will attract the right person. But I want you guys to really fall in love with Islam and the beauty of the culture of the Muslims. And I want you to develop a mechanism where you become socially involved in the American society, where you don't have to tell people about Islam. When they look at you, they will see Islam. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So. I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor, and I'm gone. I want you, my email address is malikspeaks at gmail.com. What is it? So it's M, repeat after me. We're going to do like Sesame Street. M, A, L, I, K, S, for Sam, P, for Peter, E for excellence, A for Allah, K for kindness, S for simplicity. Let me tell you why I want you to email me. I want us to sign a petition and write a beautiful letter to NYPD. I want to tell them we thank them for all of the wonderful things that they do for the people of New York City. And may God forever bless them and guide them. But I don't want you to allow anyone to put in your heart or in their heart a wedge between us because a few of them have become spies. That's what law enforcement specializes in. They spy on everybody. And that's okay. But I want you to take the higher ground and look into the life of the Prophet وسلم, and see his wisdom in dealing with those who are hostile towards the faith. Do you know when the Prophet was stolen in Taif? What did he do? When they stoned the Prophet وسلم, in Taif, what did he do? I can't hear you. He prayed for them. Do you know why? He said maybe their children will become Muslim. How many of you have at least one non-Muslim friend in school? Marshall, keep your hand up. So I need you to do me a favor. I want you to invite one of your friends to Islam. If you will invite your friends to Islam, the next adult generation of Americans, they won't be as hostile as this one. Take it from me, I'm telling you. I became a Muslim because I didn't like Muslims at first. It's true. I thought Muslims were crazy. That's what I thought. But positive peer pressure, I became a Muslim. And you know what? I love Islam. And I love you. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.
and leave them all adults and the crazy people in the media, leave them alone, let them die and pass away. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum.